And it's not just government spending. Much more important even than government spending is government regulation. Government regulation makes it very, almost impossible to innovate. All innovation today is happening in areas that are not regulated. Luckily, the federal government has not decided to regulate this. Because if it did, it wouldn't look like this. It wouldn't be this beautiful machine. Indeed, if a government committee made one of these, I'll leave it to your imagination what it would look like. And you all know it, whether you're leftist or right. You all know a government committee would never make anything as beautiful as this. All of you know that, right? <laughs> but yet, you want the government to make this. You do, because that's the implication of the policies many of you are advocating at the end of the day. Um, okay, I, he's limiting me. I would go on forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, so his fault. When, when you're talking about everyone benefiting <coughs> when, for example, we buy Harry Potter, et cetera, yeah. J.K. Rowling benefits, we benefit. Yeah. Um, all those examples were in MEDCs, um, in, in countries with. Good, so the China China. question. Cool. Well, um, I was wondering what your opinion is then when it affects another part, a poor part of the world such as Africa. I mean, the money we, Western companies, I mean, it, they are not, their time, they don't have the choice of labor a lot of the time. They are, that their job is not, like the amount they work is not correlative to how much money they get and how much they need. How do, you, how, do you, how do you get to make that decision for them? I mean, this to me is, this to me, I get this at every, particularly in Europe and in the US as well. This to me is, is one of the most, um, uh, anyway. Um, you sit here in Europe in your cushy middle class chairs. I'm serious about this. And you want to judge the African, or well, let's take the Chinese, because that's why, you know, in Apple or the Indonesian uh, so-called sweatshop or whatever. And you want to tell me that two bucks a day is not a dramatic improvement in their life? It is. And there's no way for them to get to the point to be as rich as you are unless they go through that phase. And if you deny them the ability to make two bucks a day by charging four, by insisting the companies pay four, and therefore they withdraw completely from the market. Because you know what? I'm not paying 600 bucks for this. I'll pay 300. And if I stop buying this, who suffers? That Chinese kid who's, who's right now making whatever, three bucks a day or whatever, right? And he, his alternative is to go back to the farm. And you know what they did in the farms? 40 years ago when the Chinese were all producing agriculture, they were dying of starvation. 40 to 60 million Chinese died of starvation under Mao. Suddenly, you've given them opportunity to actually attain middle classhood, to learn a skill, to, make, to, to, to have a profession, to, to make money, to make themselves into something. And by the way, the Chinese never complain about how much they're being paid. You guys complain. We complain in the West because yes, to our middle class comfy lives, that seems ridiculous. But that's because you've never lived in real poverty. Nobody in England has lived in real poverty the way the Chinese and the Africans and the Indonesians live. When you go, when you go to a place, and, and it's interesting, because take, take Korea. Korea is an interesting case study, right? You've got North Korea and South Korea. 50, 60, 70 years ago, South Korea was as poor as North Korea. They were both dirt poor. And then South Korea instituted some economic freedom. And it made it possible for people to go and work for a buck a day, for two bucks a day. And they developed skills. And they increased their productivity. And they started building more stuff. And capital flu came in and increased their productivity even more. And suddenly, and you go to Seoul today, and they're as rich as you are. But they, in, in 70 years they did, or 60 years, they did what you've done in, in hundreds of years. How did they do it? Because of the ability to slowly ratchet up. Now, if you demand that they skip and get to your standard of living like that, then they will stay poor forever. And that's what you're condemning them to. You're condemning them to eternal poverty. A kid who is getting a buck or two a day, his alternative is to die in the fields. You're make, giving, doing him a favor by giving him the two bucks a day. And he's producing something, and he's learning a skill at the same time. And one day, he'll run the factory. 
But if you, you demand that he gets paid full, he'll never have the job, he'll never have the, the, the factory, and he'll stay poor for the rest of his life. And all you have to do to see this in real action is go to Asia and see what they, how they live under poverty and see how the, these countries are growing rich. And it, you know, do you know that over the last 30 years, now this is not my statistic, this is the United Nations, you can look it up online, right? Over the last 30 years, a billion, that's with a B, billion, people have come out of poverty in Asia. Why? Because of capitalism. Not because of foreign aid. Foreign aid doesn't help anybody, except the dictators who put them in the Swiss bank accounts. What helps poor countries is freedom. You give them the rule of law. You give them property rights. If, if you're interested in property rights and how it helps poor people, read Capital Ideas by Hernando de Soto, a Peruvian economist, a brilliant economist. You give them property, you give them capital, you give them a job, that's how you create wealth. Not by, not by, giving, them, not by giving them handouts. So a billion people have come out of poverty. Now, I, I know some people have said, all you guys care about is the rich. Somebody said, what you care about is the rich deserve it. You know what? I don't care about the rich. They don't need taking care of, right? They're, they're doing great. I care about the poor. I care about the poor. And the only system in human history, the only system in human history, to help the poor, to help ambitious poor people rise out of poverty and become rich, has been capitalism. Free markets are the only, only cure for poverty. The only way in which you become rich so you don't have to have poor people is through capitalism. That's how this country became rich. That's how America became rich. That's how Hong Kong became rich. That's how South Korea became rich. There's no other way to do it. When we tried socialism, we get poverty. We get a return, a deterioration. We get a destruction of wealth, not a creation of wealth. So you want people to, you care about the poor and the middle class? I, I also care about the rich because I think that they are villainized for, which is unbelievably unjust. But I care about young people who I want to maximize their opportunities. And I know that the only way to maximize people's opportunities is to give economic freedom to the world. And that should be the goal. And that means not sitting here and judging how much a laborer makes in Indonesia. As long, yeah, now, if they're chained, if, if they're whipped, slavery is evil. Any kind of slavery is evil. But what's happening in the freer countries, that's not slavery. That's choices that people are making to make their lives better. You don't like it, but it's their lives, not yours. I have to stop. So sorry, guys. I'd go on all night. Thanks. Good question.